Hello everybody, uh, Deeble here with another TP uh, tutorial video, Tanks for Sector video of uh, the dungeon Never Reap. Never Reap is a level 60 dungeon. Uh, it is unlocked by actually doing a side quest. The name of the side quest is Sanabanu. The Sea of Clouds is the area where the quest is given, and the coordinates are X11, Y14. This uh, dungeon is item level requirement uh, 145, uh, and it also drops item level 160 gear. It's a total of three bosses. Uh, it could be fairly challenging depending on what your setup is. Um, this is a dungeon where if you have solid DPS, you can make good runs on it and get through it fairly quickly. However, if uh, the DPS is a little low or you got brand new DPS, it might take a little bit of a while to clear through it. Uh, it's not too difficult, just the bosses have a lot of HP. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get into it. Uh, we're going to cover some of the trash mob pools, and then we're going to go and talk about some of the bosses. Nothing is too difficult, but like I said, as long as people respect the dungeon and don't do anything too crazy, you should have no problems. And you should be able to clear this dungeon with little to no difficulty. Well, excluding the last boss, but we'll get to that. So, duty commenced. For the most part, let me see here. There we go. So you just go ahead and go talk to Tono uh, Vonu. You get the offerings, you right click it, and then it'll open up these little air paths, and you just basically jump inside of them, and they'll shoot you up. What I like to do in this area is actually mark the first two targets with the tokos. You can actually run up, shield lob, flash, and pull them all the way back so you don't have to deal with the moth as well because the moth is a patrol. But if something happens, then, you know, it's not much you can really do about it. I would prioritize probably the smaller monsters over the moth. The moth does a pretty wide AoE effect, and in that small area, it doesn't really help too much. But, like I said, usually you can pull the first two sets of moth, no problem. Then you pull the moth, and then after that, you got another two set add after that. So we'll just go ahead and speed up towards the end of the mobs dying. So, like I said, those are the first three monster pulls, and then you got an additional two monster pull right here with the buzzards. Nothing too serious, pretty straightforward. Just mark them up, DPS them down and then basically speed up a little bit you activate the next pillar and you go up to the next area pretty straightforward uh, this next section does have the little tornadoes that are basically swirling back and forth what I like to do is uh, tag these monsters right here in the center and just make sure you don't hit the tornado I get pretty lucky I think I just wait a little bit for it to go by and then what I like to do is drag it all the way by here by this treasure coffer so then you don't have to worry about uh, all the tornadoes running back and forth and I mean that's pretty much about it go ahead and DPS down these phases of these monsters and uh, oop, what happened to the music one second there we go um, you just DPS these set of ads down and that's pretty much it and what I like to do is after we get these ads down is on the next set of ads I'll just tell the group just to wait I'll just go ahead and mark the targets I'll do a shield lob and I'll pull them right back over to where we just DPS the first set of groups, uh, first set of mobs. And that's pretty much about it. Some people were wondering about that or you may not know. Uh, doing that as a tank just makes it a lot easier for your party. If you gotta let them know to let them hang back, that's fine. Uh, better safe than sorry, you don't want people hitting whirlwinds and slowing down the DPS. I don't think really it's gonna kill anybody, but it does slow down the damage. So that's pretty much it for the first two pulls. And then I do believe we have one more additional pool on this platform, yes we do, uh, where it's going to involve one giant moth and two lesser adds. You can pull them all at once, I prioritize if you're pulling them all at once to so go for the moth first. Or if you want, you can just basically pick out the moth and just pull them back a little bit and be perfectly fine. So we pull the moth right here, and then he accidentally pulled an additional one. All the mobs don't pull at once when you pull them, so you don't have to worry about that. But. Uh, you know, uh, staying towards the side, you can avoid the tornado for the most part. As long as you kind of stay in the middle right here, you don't have much to worry about. So go ahead and burn down the moth, followed by the additional add, and then make sure you clean up the additional two. If everything goes well, well the way it should go is uh, you should pick up the moth and then pick up the birds after that and take them all here in the middle here because you don't have to worry about the tornadoes. And uh, that's pretty much about it. So we killed those ones. We went over here and killed the last mob, that one that was by itself since the mobs don't chain pull. And then after you finish up this mob, you're going to hit the cloud altar over there. And you're going to go ahead and be at the first boss. And the first boss 
is uh, the giant bird creature. I'm probably going to butcher its name, so we'll just call it giant bird creature so we don't just get flabbergasted about that thing. I'll try. It's Nunya Nunik, or Nunya Nook. I can't do it, so we'll just call it the, the giant bird. <laughs> Uh, this fight is pretty straightforward. If you'd like to go on a Sword Oath, uh, I think you'll be perfectly fine, especially if you meet the item level requirements for this. Just make sure you do a couple Rage of Halone combos before you try to do your Royal Authority combo. Or just make sure, with whatever tanking class you're playing, just make sure you get in some nice uh, threat rotations in before you start putting out the DPS. Eventually, Bird will go into the Shadow Realm or make it like all misty and uh, basically just avoid the AoE in the ground, find the Shadow of the uh, Giant Bird, DPS it down while avoiding the AoE effects on the ground, and that's pretty much about it. At least that's what you have to do as a tank. The uh, ads are usually handled by the DPS, so you, that's really not much to worry about. Just focus on putting the damage on the Giant Bird to get him out of this phase to return the, uh, the non-Shadow Giant Bird <laughs> back to the field of play. So you can DPS and down and kill him. So, like I said, Sword Oath for this fight, usually not a problem. If you want to be extra safe, you can use Shield Oath. But, I mean, that's pretty much about it. Nothing too complex there. It just kind of repeats those phases over and over again. And it's pretty much a hand-me-out. So as long as you don't stand anything that you're not supposed to, um, somebody doesn't out-threat you and take aggro and kill themselves, you should have no problems. And, of course, if you notice somebody do it, is doing strong DPS, you should probably just stay in Shield Oath. But... For the most part, I usually like to even put some DPS accessory someone sometimes, or maybe do DPS and sort of, but for the purposes of the video, I just showed it doing the safe method, so that's pretty much about it. We'll just speed up a little bit, and as you can see, it took a little bit of while, so like I said, the bosses do have a lot of HP, but the boss went down. And then you just go ahead and click the Cloud Archer, and you go on to the next section, which is pretty straightforward. You're going to have uh, these Venus right here. And you want to mark the first one for DPS because that's melee, and the second one in the background is going to be actually a caster one. So, like I said, that's the one I always DPS first, or I mark first. And the reason I do that because it's melee, and then I just bring it over to the caster. And if you stand right there, you'll be perfectly fine. You can DPS down these two before you pull the next adds. The next two adds are totems. You'll be seeing those in the next fight. Nothing too serious and stuff like that. And shout out to Moist Apple, he sent me money. Uh, while we were streaming to uh, go get food after we're at this dungeon was done, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so pretty much, like I said, DPS down the ads, nothing too serious. You got two totems right here. You're going to pick those up, just mark them one and two. Then you DPS them down, and then it lets you go on to the next area. Uh, this is the way I like to do it. There's a B set of B ads on the right. Wait for the B ads to come. Shield lob them, tomahawk, whatever you can do to get aggro. You actually just walk up to them and just get aggro on them. Be careful with these bees. The reason why you don't mob everything here is because the bees, I think they do, they do really high damage when they get to cast off certain spells or they don't get damaged enough quickly. Uh, I don't know if it's a final sting effect, but all I think I do remember is when I mob multiple monsters, my HP will be ping-ponging back and forth. So just, just do the bees two at a time. Mob them first and second, and that's pretty much all you have to do. They don't do anything. It's really, the bees are not bad. Uh, or I guess the Vespas are not bad as long as you just take a little bit at a time. Um, if you want to mob through, just make sure you have your cooldowns ready um, and you'll have no problems. But we get these down pretty fast and they don't do any extra abilities to me because, you know, we damage them fast enough. And then um, outside of all that, those are going to go down. And then for the next set of groups, I can stand over here to the side, pick up a little bit of aggro on them. And what I like to do is actually bring them back or you could DPS them here. Uh, and then basically what you're doing is you're saving the tree for last. Again, if you like to gather up all the bees in the tree, you're more than able to, but I'm telling you with item level 145, you probably don't want to do it. And uh, these monsters have a lot of HP, so you don't want to do that. Just kill them a little bit at a time. Just take a little bit. Of, take this group, focus them down, mark the targets. That will be a lot more efficient in the long run. So we'll go ahead and speed up, and then basically we pull the, uh, the tree the grandfather tree it uh, just make sure you don't get standing for the April storm and that's pretty much about it just DPS him down and uh, nothing to him and in this last area you gotta go have a vundu and you're gonna have two totems however you want to mark them and kill them that's perfectly fine very straightforward and easy and after you dissipate this mob you'll actually bring you up uh, to the boss so on this boss um, and he was pretty interesting the first time we uh, fought against him. We kind of figured it out pretty quick. The only thing you have to worry about is basically he's going to create a circle on the ground. 
And inside of this circle, uh, if there are totems inside of it, you need to run over, pick up the totems, and run them out. If you do not run these totems out in time before that circle effect ends, those totems will come to life, make the boss hit harder, and uh, pretty much make your life a living hell. So uh, if it happens that you do get a set of ads, you need to kill the ads first, then the boss. But everybody should be working together as a team and as a group so you can make sure you can pick up all the totems off the ground. So I come in. If you like to do sword off on this guy, it's not too big of a deal um, because you usually can keep threat pretty well if you want to make the fight go a little bit quicker. Or you can keep it slow and steady because he doesn't really do a lot of damage to the point in which that it's going to basically make you go crazy or make your healer go crazy. So <clears throat> if you notice you got slay DPS, you might want to go ahead and use shield swipes and help that out and help you with the um, TP issue so you don't run out. And as you saw, everybody got those totems above the head and they ran around. Wherever you're standing at when that effect goes off is where the totem's going to cast. But just basically pick up the totem, move them outside, and that's all you do. Um, some people try to stack the totems or make sure you put the totems on the outskirts of the edges. What I kind of discovered, it really kind of doesn't matter. The main thing is just place the totems to the side or just keep DPS in the boss and then just pick up the totems. I mean, if you want to spread them out a little bit, that's fine. But just the main concern is just getting the totems out of the circle. There's four people, and you should never have a problem doing that. Because he does no damage when he's actually summoning that uh, sacred totem. And when he starts channeling that circle and stuff. So there's a totem chant. Even if everybody has stopped DPS, all you got to do is just stop, go over and pick up the, uh, the totem, and that's all you have to do. If you see a totem right next to you, pick it up um, and move to the side. Uh, if there's a lot of totems, move, you know, you basically jump in there, help everybody out, move it outside of the circle. But if you notice there's one totem there and you see a DPS going to go for it, just let them go for it and keep DPS on the boss so you can accelerate the, how fast he dies. So basically, you rinse, wash, repeat this phase, and you keep doing it over and over again until basically he's down to nothing. Just basically pulling those totems outside the circle. The longer the fight goes on, of course, more totems there are, so you want to, you know, just make sure you are you're on top of it. And because, like I said, those totems inside the circle, they will go ahead and uh, spawn an ad. Alright, so we're getting towards the last end part of this video. Uh, I'm trying to keep this very short because this is a very long dungeon. Uh, I think I said that's why I'm fast forwarding through all this trash and stuff. Um, this area is not too bad with these last sets of ads. But the thing you have to realize is that these platforms, they got, you see those little water geysers and stuff? When Those are going to pop up periodically while you're DPSing the targets here. And you don't want to get hit by that because it's going to make you die. And it's going to make uh, the healer's job a lot more terrible. So one thing you could do is like with this first set of ads is just aggro them. And then pull them out to the front over here in this wide open area. Or actually you can be like me and just keep getting hit by the water like a bad person. I don't know why I was doing that. But I bring them out here into this open area. It gives you a lot of room to move around if you need to. And you just mark the targets and kill them. And there's really not much to see here. If there's water effects that come up, just make sure you get out of it immediately or as fast as you can. And that's pretty much all you can do. But you see you got a nice large open area. So DPS down the targets and move on to the next area. And after we kill these ads, one thing to be forewarned about before you just start running over here, there actually is going to pop up additional ads. So you got a couple seconds, the ads pop up, I mark the targets that we need to, and water blocks your passage. They won't go down until you kill all of them. So, you know, we just do the normal thing here. Same thing as before with the other first set of ads. You just DPS down the ads, make sure you get your DPS on point and attack on the targets you need to. And then avoiding any gushing water geysers that come up. That's pretty much it. If you want to bring these mobs all the way back into the area where you tank the first two, that's perfectly fine as well. Just let your group know you're doing so. Um, but if you feel that you can avoid everything right here and you're not worrying too much about clustering, then this will be fine. Uh, we had one ninja and we had one machina, so we didn't have double melee. If it was double melee, I'd probably drag it out into the open area to make things easier. But since we got one range, it's really not too serious. So as you see, they're DPSing down. And as soon as they are finished, as you can see, the next area is cleared for moving towards. And uh, if you want, you can go ahead and tank these two giraffe looking creatures, which I think they stole these from Windurst in Final Fantasy XI. These used to be outside the town of it, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, you just pick up these gads, you know, mark the targets. And like I said, I'm pretty big on marking targets because I'm assuming like if people are first approaching this dungeon or you're playing with people in general, that might be new. It kind of lets them know what ta targets to focus their DPS on and everybody can be attacking the same target and basically, uh, you know, kill the ad faster and you don't have to worry about threat issues. So you just go ahead and get these ads down. Nothing really too complicated here. Don't stand in the AO thing, AOE thing they shoot out. Uh, let me see here. Yep. And then in this last section, I do believe you get a couple, yeah, in this last section, you get one more water wall, a couple ads here and there. 
and uh, you just basically, if you want, you can drag them out to the side, you get a total of four of them, so just be very careful, don't be afraid to use cooldowns right here, because sometimes with tanking four mobs and hitting a geyser, it can make it a little stressful on the healer, or like I said, you can just pull them out of this small circle area and make your uh, healer's life a lot easier. As you can see, everything's going down, and we finish it, and then we're onwards to the last boss. A uh, couple things you guys need to know, this boss fight is very long. It's more about endurance than anything else. Your healers and DPS are going to have to be accountable for themselves from where they stand and not being knocked off and not being hurt. Also, the big thing that you need to do is just make sure you can alleviate as much damage as possible for the healer, help DPS the adds, and just make sure you stand in the correct location behind the snake on its butt to make sure you don't get knocked off. The outer edge, if you step off, you will automatically die. So I just come in here and I just start my regular DPS rotation and basically you're going to force and keep doing this into the ad phase. He does spawn one additional ad towards the beginning and the DPS need to handle the mechanic or something you need to worry about. Now one thing you could do is put a C or A or B marker in the center of the map and that can always be your safe spot so when he does his global big mass uh, pushback ability. If people are in the center on that mark, they don't have to worry about getting knocked off because if you put it directly in the center, it's enough distance so that you don't get knocked off no matter where you're standing. So that might be something you want to do if you notice people getting falling off. Stat if they can't stack on this butt or they can't adjust themselves, just tell them, hey, run in the center where I marked the uh, wayward mark at and you'll be fine. So that's his ability that's going to knock off. You notice how I stand in the center? As long as you stand in the center, you won't get knocked off. So like I said, that's a good place to put a marker at. And of course, you know you have to avoid those whirlwinds that are going around. So, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. You do DPS to the snake. You have tornadoes going around. Once the snake uh, like basically takes a certain amount of damage, uh, he's going to spawn adds. When he spawns that, he's going to become invincible. So when he's invincible, you have to spawn the adds, or you have to DPS down the adds to get him out of being invulnerable or invincible, however you want to say it. So, dodge the tornadoes. DPS the ads when they show up to get the snake out of being invincible. Make sure you stack up on the, the snake's butt or just simply stand in the center to guarantee you don't get knocked off. If you do get knocked off, you're dead. Uh, like I, You can't worry too much about the healer. If the healer takes too many like uh, whirlwinds and some other crazy stuff and he, can't, he hasn't healed you, like he gets interrupted in the cast, don't be afraid to pop cooldowns because <laughs> that does happen a lot. But as a tank, you should be watching out for the uh, tornadoes and you should be kind of taking on the edge anyway so you don't have to worry about anything. So we put him in another phase, as you can see, we're DPSing down the ads. And we're about to get the last one here. And again, as always, always run towards the center. Now if you want to stand behind the snake butt, that's fine. That's perfect. See how they get knocked back a little bit, they don't have to worry about it. I just always, and I marked it right, that's why I always just stand in the middle. Because that's like a surefire way just to make sure nobody dies. <clears throat> it's like, hey, just stand in the center, you won't get pushed off. As long as it's perfectly placed there, you should have no problems. Outside of all this, that's it. Um, you just gotta repeat this phase over and over again until the uh, Wukong, or oh, sorry, Wakion dies, or I just call it the, the snake or the, the serpent, as whatever you guys wanna call it. And uh, Never Reap will be down for you. Um, like I said, the last drops are pretty nice. They have a lot of some, uh, really nice uh, tank items with inside this dungeon. So if you're a tank, you know, gearing up for your new. Uh, for law seal stuff and things of this nature, this might be right up your alley. This is going to get you the 160 gear that you need. Uh, gives you 80 seals and all that good stuff. And as you can see, it's just pretty much down into the point in which he dies. And it's a really long fight, so... Shield, well, you won't need to worry too much about shield swipe, because there's a plenty of times for you to regain back TP, but... Uh, the only way to make that dungeon go faster is to simply just do more DPS. But, I mean, other than that, man, it's pretty straightforward, and I hope you guys enjoyed the videos and to shed some light on the level 60 dungeon Never Reap. Good luck in your runs, and I hope you guys have a good day. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow, and check out my other videos.